As I promised in the studio tonight with me on this Labor Day weekend, friend, musician, actor, webman, multi-instrumentalist, all around uh, great guy, Matthew Costello. It's nice to have you back here. Great to be here, George. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And you have a new album out, which we uh, are going to be listening to and talking about, too, called The Return. And let's talk about that, the title first. Oh, Return. Mm -hmm. It's based on, uh, uh, back in the 80s and 90s, I was very a student of the I Ching, which is a wonderful, wonderful book. But uh, there was this one particular hexagram. The I Ching is something you divine with. You toss coins and you get a hexagram to give you a message. Uh, it's actually sort of a, a reflection of, of what's going on in your life. And uh, there was this one hexagram. It's return, hexagram 24. When, and the image of it is the, um, the return of the light. It is the solstice when the days start becoming long uh, uh, after being dark for so long, which, of course, to ancient man, the days started getting shorter. They were sure that the world was coming to an end. Right. And once the light started to return, it was a celebration. It was something new. And um, basically, that's what that piece is about. It's, a, it's, a, it's about uh, finding a renewal in, in a situation that was going on in my life. Was there a special inspiration over a long period of time, or did the the works come about in a fairly quick manner? Well, the works actually span from 1978 through 2005. Okay. Uh, through, this is a collection of uh, instrumentals that feature the piano. Of course, I write songs. I write industrial music. I've written production music, all kinds of things. But over the years, the piano has always been a, a cornerstone instrument for me, and I've written a lot of piano pieces, but I just found in lo looking back through my collection that these were particular pieces that I thought fit together, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to put something out like this. You know, I, it, it's, a, it's more of a, uh, an overview of some things that happened over the years. The oldest one is Warm Rain Night from 1978. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the performances are not necessarily from that period, uh -huh. but they're, that, that's when that was written. 
um, had to do with going out one night. It was a winter night, like January, but it was balmy. It felt it was like it had to be in the 60s or something like that. And there was just a, a situation that occurred to me on the street while it was misting and stuff like that, and, and it got my adrenaline really going. And I, uh, I thought I was seeing someone from my past walking past me, and it wasn't. You know, it was. <laughs> it, they were coming behind me, and then they went past, and it wasn't them. And then, so I went home, and for some reason, that piece came forward, and I called it "Warm Rain Night." Getting back to your, your new album, Return, was it hard to select the pieces? I mean, there were, there were just six pieces, six tunes on it, and you've written so much. Was it any kind of an agonizing kind of process to select for and, and to limit it to, you know, the brief number of tunes? I chose these particular tunes because they all had a really strong emotional quality to them. Um, and actually, the first piece doesn't instrumentally doesn't belong with the others. The others are either solo piano or solo or piano with orchestral instruments. Okay. The first piece is a group. It's drums, bass, and uh, there's organ in it. There's uh, you know cowbell, and the drums are going, getting this groove going on. And uh, the piano is not. It's not. There's really no melody in there. It's all improvisational, and, and the the sort of chorus part doesn't even have a, a melody over. It's just sort of this groove it goes into. And I and I intentionally kept it that way. I said, okay. well, I could do something with that, but I think I like that it doesn't. I think I like that it just takes me to this place where I just want to, you know, dance around or tap my foot. Um, but it, 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 all those fit together for me. There are, uh, I don't have hundreds of piano pieces, but I have maybe... 15, 20 oh, that I've written over the years that could fall in there. But these were cohesive. These held together. These were some favorite things. The Lake, for instance, was actually written. I did a production of the of uh, Chekhov's The Seagull out of the Windy River Winery in 1998. And I played uh, Tregorin. And um, in August, wearing a four 
uh, a three-piece wool suit and the fourth <laughs> act outside was, to, I mean, I lost so much weight and I sweated so bad. But anyway, uh-huh. the sent one of the central images of the seagull is the lake that they that Nina lives around. And, uh, and it stuck with me and it became a very romantic image in my mind. And this piece started to come out, and I, and I really sort of fell in love with the ah, the idea that of capturing just the calm rhythm of the surface of a lake in a piano piece, and that's what it, what his total intent was. And there is a little break in the center there where something happens, and I always imagined that was Trigorin seeing Nina over the edge of the lake or something like that. But I don't know if anybody else gets that from it. But it's 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 one of those things that it's a very slow, and it's great to put you to sleep if you <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> that that's fascinating for me in a number of ways because on uh, last week's show, I opened with a, a Steve Morris piece called Huron River Blues, and I'm I'm sure it's completely different from what he intended. But in my own mindset, it reminds me of those kinds of lakes that I would see in August summers in upstate New York. Uh You know, that cool um, still body of water. Yeah. You know, and uh, there's uh, just, I don't know, something about water that I relate to a lot Yes, in music. Water is emotion. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's, it's one one of the images of it.
of you are just tuning in on this Labor Day weekend, the program The Electric Crowd. I'm George Maida on 88.9 WCVE. My special guest, Matthew Costello, talking about his new album, Return. I don't know if you got to see it. I did a, I, I have a short video of 30-second uh, selections from Return uh, that I used uh, paintings to that sort of do a Ken Burns effect for yes. each piece. Yes, uh-huh, yeah, I did and, see that. And, uh, uh Oh gosh, this pa- there were two paintings by this one artist that um, I, I discovered when I was looking for things for this video, John Atkinson Brim- Grimshaw. And he has this wonderful painting of a lake. It's a, a, a lake in Leeds at night, the moon's in the sky, and, I, and it just fit this particular song so uh-huh. well I was just stunned by it they, I couldn't ask for a better image same was true of the one that I, it was one of his that I chose for Warm Rain Night that reminds me in a, in a way of um, probably my all time favorite director uh, Stan, the late Stanley Kubrick he had such an ear and eye for matching picture and sound and vice versa Yeah, you know to me I, I just learned so much from that because back in the day I wanted to be the next Cooper, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, I was always drawn to the fact of how meticulous and right the soundtracks were for his um, his films. I mean, I remember oh. everything from 2001 to uh, Barry Lyndon, which probably turned me on to uh, the Schubert string trio, uh, Opus 100, you know, things like that. Um and that th- ties into another question I was going to ask you, too, about you said you you have all of this stuff at home, uh, you know, in terms of equipment, and it's kind of an agonizing process of how to orchestrate it. Mm-hmm. I know um, Duke Ellington had that same problem, too, uh, problem, you know, in quotes. But it also reminds me of something that um, the producer of Def Leppard uh, once mentioned, Mutt Lang, that nothing is ever too precious. They were concerned about... What are we going to do now? You know, Mutt's in the hospital. Um, yeah. The drummer lost an arm, and he said to them, "Nothing is ever too precious that you know you can't start again." Do you? Can you relate to that at all? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I. I'm, uh, sometimes the process is agonizing. Um, it, it, it reminds me of a story. Uh, there's a book I read about creativity, and it, it points out Mozart could sit down and just write it out. It just came right out of him. You know, right. He just understood it. He knew he knew how the instruments were going to play it. He knew everything came right out of him. Beethoven could sit and agonize over a three note motive. For weeks, <laughs> I, know. For I can weeks. relate to that. <laughs> and 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 that's the, the the balance of what we face, you know, between the two. It's it's um, is it is it the right edge? Is it the right sound? And and. These days, it's not just because it, it's harder for me to perform now. I have arthritis in this one finger, and I, for nine years I had a pinched nerve that didn't let me play, uh, or it was very difficult for me to play. Um, it, it, but it, I, I see the computer and digital audio workstations mixing and all that stuff as a palette. It's mm-hmm. as artistic as playing. Mm-hmm. It's another it's another aspect of it. So now you not only balance the performance of the instruments, the singing and everything else, but also how do they sit in the soundscape, you know? Right. Where do, how high are they? How low are they? Which sides are they on? And how are they interacting? How do they glue together? You know, how do they build? What's the dynamics? I, I, nowadays, sometimes when I'm working with a piece, it's more like composing. I can play the basic parts, but then I'll go into the score. And I'll correct things or I'll say, well, let me move this this way instead. And, or let me move this note up here and try that. Uh-huh. You know, those sorts of things. So it's more more like composing, more like working with a sheet of paper, only it's in a computer. Uh, but it's a balance between the two. I mean, sometimes it's agonizing. Sometimes it's the most thrilling thing in the world. It's just, just to, to get that engaged by music. Exactly. I... Uh went to the other side of that. I mean, I, I, as you know, it takes me, you know, umpteenth years to, to work on a piece, fine tune it because you, you have a vision in your mind mm-hmm. or ear that you want to uh, realize. But this past spring, I was also curious about going the other direction of just doing a snapshot, you know, in a studio. Um, 
kind of like a sonic Polaroid and just to go with it with the drummer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kevin Beal. Yeah. Okay. Kevin is fantastic. For he me. is. And, uh, I had sent him a you know a preview track, but I wanted to be in the moment, and uh, I still haven't added anything to it. It's kind of a a slow jazz type of ballad, you know, and uh, um, it, it's fun to explore the other side of it since I do you know rack my brain sometimes to. Uh, I I have that experience as well. There's uh, I have tremendous amount of unformed pieces part of uh, part of what prompted me to contact you recently about us getting together and i'm looking forward to that i can't wait is is that i had been playing with this thing i i mean i love textures and i, I when you played at the showcase I, mean, I that's the kind of thing that i've been exploring here on this sort of thing uh -huh. you know i love text you know in the middle of um yes is close to the edge there is this it almost sounds like crickets and an and environment, but it's an unearthly thing. And I love the way they created that. And those those things are always thrilling to me. But then there's melody involved and, and introduction of things. And and I was finding that I was exploring something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I love going back to inspirations from the 60s. Oh, uh, yes, you yes. You know, to, to try and stimulate an idea and... Uh, there was a Doors, you know, the opening of Light My Fire. And so I, uh -huh. started, I didn't do that. I did something similar to it. And then I found myself at this place where things were going, and I introduced a sitar, and then I introduced something else. And I, and I, and I sort of sat on it. I didn't, never completed it. And, but I, as, I was, as I was working on it, I said, I should get George. Let's at least throw it by him. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm certainly honored, Matthew, and I look forward to that. Let's tell people how... Um they can get your album return. You can buy it through my website, costello-music.com. And there's a promotional page there, which will take you to the store. Uh, CDs are $9.99 and digital downloads are $7.99. Or you can go straight to my Reverb Nation page, which is reverbnation.com slash costello music. Is it in one word. Is it in uh, brick and mortar stores at all? No. Okay. No, uh, the the delight of of having a store like the Reverb Nation store is everything's print on demand, okay. so I don't have to keep stock. It's um always fun to have you in conversation here, and I'm looking forward to getting together with you and, and making more music. Me too. Thanks, George. Thanks for coming by. <laughs>